While we're waiting to get started here, um, what I want you to do is just look at your painting and um, try to think about what you want to do to finish it, because that's I'm going to finish this one or try to finish it today. And also, can somebody ch uh, test out the um, chat, chat box for me and just write something? I'm hoping that I made it so that you can chat, okay? Good. All right, we're in. So take a look at your piece and really reflect on it and see what you think it could use to finish it. We'll get started in a few minutes. Everybody. So let's get started. Let me know if the audio is not good. It turned out last time I don't think I even needed a mic. Audio was still good to my computer. So if that's not the case still, just let me know. Um, good morning. We're going to try to finish a painting. Um, perhaps you have a painting there that you can work on that you want to finish that's been sort of making you wonder what to do with it. And if not, you can just watch my process and learn how I approach finishing a painting. And so let's just jump right in. Um, and uh, just actually before I jump right in, uh, make sure you look on the description page to like below to see where to subscribe to my email list. So you can find out about these or subscribe to this channel um, and like the video, please, um, so that I can continue to build an audience here. Okay, so. This is the piece that we're going to be looking at today and trying to finish. And your what we did last time was worked with a monochromatic color scheme. And I think I'm going to branch out from that a little bit because I'm feeling like it's limiting me a little bit. And I just really see some peach going on here. So when we're wanting to finish a painting, I think we really want to observe first and observe what we really like what could use something, um, flipping it upside down always helps too to see what's popping out. So let's do that first. Okay. 
So when I flip it upside down, this line kind of bothers me a bit. So I think I'd want to blend that. But I'm feeling like there's a lot of nice, you know, movements and things going on here. This, it feels like it's coming out of, no, like this is sort of just plopped on. This needs something, right? And I think we generally just need to have some other values on here. This blue is standing out to me as just also just kind of plopped on there. I think this is the strength and perhaps I will continue working um, around this strength, but also we don't want to let it limit me either. So let's just, let's just kind of get into it, see what happens. Okay. So I think I'm going to start with, I'm really liking this purple here. I think I'm going to bring more of that in and also mix some peach and um, so I'm going to go ahead and just mix some colors first so that I'm ready to go. Because once you're in the flow of painting, you don't want to always have to stop to, um, you know, to um, mix your colors. So let's just start on that. Okay. So I'm going to do a peach. So I'm going to need yellow and white and red or orange we'll go right to red and i also want to do purple so this is my purple and we always want a little bit of black okay so if you're working with me go ahead and mix um I think what we should do here is like get our white and our black on our palette so that, you know, that's always there and ready to go. And I'm going to keep my white up here and I'm going to put my black down here so that they stay pretty far from each other. That's probably way more black than I need, but we'll go with it. Okay. And let's see here. We're gonna take make a peach. I'm using quinacridone red light um, to start my peach here. And we'll want to start with the white actually because um, it's such a strong right. Like red is such a strong color that we want to put just a little bit in. So I'll just put a little bit up here, and I'll put a little bit of yellow up here since I know it's going into my peach. And just a wee bit of red and a wee bit of yellow, and let's just see what we get here. That's pretty good, but I think I want to tone that down a little bit. And the way to tone down a color, if you remember the color wheel, we use the opposite in the color wheel. So we're going to, we're making peach that's orange plus white essentially. So like a blue or blue green would neutralize this. And this is where these fluid paints come in really handy, just quickly putting a little bit there. So I'm going to do a very small amount to try to bring this down. Let's see what we get. So kind of like a grayish orange. I like that. I think that works. And so I'm going to um, actually use some of the golden gloss medium today to um, keep my paints wet longer and also extend your paints. And I, I, I for sure want to do some glazing today. So you might not have any. Um, if you don't have this, do yourself a favor and just buy some. If there's any medium you own, it should be the acrylic glazing liquid gloss. Doesn't have to be golden. Liquitex makes it. Nova Color makes it. But this is your everything medium. So you want to have this. Okay. So... I think that looks pretty good. But now the test is what I do is I take the color and then I'm going to hover this palette knife in front of the, the painting. That looks pretty good, actually. So um, I'm going to go with that color. All right. And then I'm going to quickly mix before we get um, too into this here. Let's go ahead and mix a bit of the blue purple color that I said I liked. And we'll make a... Let's see. Let's put it here. As you can see, I use a lot of palette knives. <laughs> so I don't have to clean all the time. I just, you know, I just 
park them to the side and then that's the palette knife for that color for the whole session and it just makes it so much easier. I'm gonna change this up a little bit by adding some blue into my blue purple. Whenever you add, you know, a bit of a color, especially if it's a cool to a cool, if you just add a little bit in there, it just changes it slightly and it makes it your own mix. It makes it so much more unique than just, you know, good old fashioned blue and purple straight out of the tube kind of thing. All right, let's see. Let's add a bit of white to that, titanium white. Titanium white is the one that's going to make this more opaque and lighter, quicker. You can use mixing white, which is what I have over there. Um, titanium is going to do things faster. Now that's a bit um, bright for me. So let's tone this down with what's the opposite of purple. It is yellow. Um, think about the Lakers or purple iris. Okay, those, that's how you tone it down a bit. And you see, it's not toning it down a whole lot, but it's taking that edge off. I'm gonna go a little bit more. <clears throat> so it takes that, that edge of that high intensity purple down a bit. And then if we look at these two together, these look, I think these look pretty good together. So, all right, let's add a little bit of the gloss medium, like about, if you add about, you know, 10% or so, you shouldn't change the opacity too much of your paint. A little bit later, um, I want to do glazes and we'll do a lot more medium when we do a glaze. Okay, so now I wanna get more white ready so that when I'm in my flow, I have the paint ready on my palette. So put that there, we already have the black. And I know that I'll probably want some more blue at some point. So, you know, this whole part of like setting up the palette and getting ready, this is, this is a big part. Okay, so this is stuck shut. This happens, I'm sure this happens to you guys sometimes. So a trick for this is to put Vaseline around the side so you don't have to suffer like I am right now. Ah, oh, I got it, okay. So before you close it, you wipe it with a wet you know, cloth and then you put Vaseline on there and then that will keep it from sticking. Or you could probably put coconut oil too or something like that. I haven't tried that, but that would be nicer than using like petroleum product, I suppose. <laughs> okay, so before I do the blue, let's just clean up a little bit here and let's just move this purple over a little bit. So we have some room. And as you can see, that's like not like a whole lot of paint there, but we're kind of, we're gonna see if this is the, these are the paints we wanna use. I'm gonna mix the blue right in here. Why am I doing that? Good question. I want to make a harmonious color mix. So if I use a bit of the colors that are going to be on my palette, then this will harmonize my colors, bring them together, unify them. You didn't change it a whole lot, but it connects these colors and harmonizes. I think I could use a bit more peach. So let's just go like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a bit more, I'm gonna do a bit more black and then a nice big old hunk of white in here too, just to lighten this up more. Because at this point in my painting, I have a lot of medium tones and dark tones, right? And not a whole lot of highlights or contrast. So that's why I don't wanna go too dark with this, this color I'm mixing, okay? So that's why we're gonna tone that down a bit. And it's definitely pretty bright blue, isn't it? So um, let's bring that down with a little orange. I'm just gonna do yellow and red. Let's see how that changes this. Okay, and I do want that to be lighter. So let's go ahead and do bit more of that white, a bit more titanium here too. I even want a bit more black. Okay. And I'm more white still. <laughs> you know, once you get your colors figured out and you get this first step done, then it flows pretty well. It's so nice to just get this done early on. And then we'll put a little bit of, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's put a little bit of the glazing medium there. You could also use retarder. Um, let's see if I have some. I don't have some right now, 
But retarder, um, Golden makes it. They make open acrylics, or you can just buy a retarder medium, and that'll keep your paints wet longer too. Okay. And I'm also gonna just spritz the, the palette real quick for like some of these thinner areas, keep them wet so I can get in there and use that when I need it. Okay, so I'm ready to paint. Let's do this. Okay. So I think I'm gonna start around here. And I'm gonna start with that purple color to, and I'll start with this nice big brush because I've got a really big canvas here. Whoops, I just dipped it in the peach by mistake. So now I'm gonna start with um, a smaller brush because <laughs> I don't feel like cleaning that right now. All right. So got the purple color here. I'm gonna just extend out, you know, what's happening. Some big gestural marks. And um, I'm liking how we're seeing through a little bit. And now that I see that, I'm like, ooh, I think I want to do a bit more of a glaze. So let me show you that. So let's put the golden medium right in here. I'm going to put a lot in, OK? Um, this, at this point, is probably closer to 60% medium, 40% pigment. You know, these are not exact things. Don't worry. But when you're doing a glaze, you definitely don't want a whole lot of color in there. So this is not a exact glaze, but it's going to make this more see-through, right? So that I can see what's under a little bit better. And we don't want to do it with water. Well, water really doesn't glaze. It makes a wash, right? When this dries, you'll probably notice that a bit more too. I need to put a little energy out of this thing. It's like kind of stagnant. Okay. Really liking this color on top here, and I'm glad I'm departing from the monochromatic color scheme. I'm just letting myself go beyond that a little bit. I like to kind of blend in, so I'm going with the side of my brush here. I'm not going straight on, okay? And I kind of call it scrubbing, just sort of scrubbing. And I'm letting the little bit that's left on my brush here to blend this line. I just think it's a good, a good paint and a good color to just blend this line out a little bit. Going in between it. Okay, so we're trying to establish like a really big area with with what the color that you chose to kind of work with next. And I like to work in triangles. If you look, so I was an art history major. If you look a lot at a lot of um, famous paintings, well done paintings, you're gonna see a triangle composition. So if you think about some of the early like um, masters, like Jesus at the top and then, you know, Mary or, you know, other people right around, not Mary, I guess it'd be Mary and then Jesus, right? <laughs> um, but, you know, the figure and the people around them, um, even, you know, a lot of portrait stuff, but also in landscapes, look at art history and look and see where you see triangles. So I'm going to make a triangle. It's not exact, right? With purple. So I'm going to take this purple all the way over here. And now I'm going to do more of a glaze because I don't want to totally cover up this, this blue down here. So now more medium. <clears throat> I don't think I put this on your list of supplies because... <clears throat> I didn't know that we were going to do this, but here we are doing it. So if you don't have it, just water down your paint a bit, okay? Okay, so then, okay, now I really want to go with this big brush. I better clean this peach off the brush now. <clears throat> okay, so... Can you see if we can see right through that purple? You see, it's like a veil. So if you think about the way that these master painters painted like lace and fabric and like the veiling, right, or veils, they used glazes. A lot of medium, you know, liquid often in oil paint. In acrylic, it's, you know, acrylic glazing medium. Gloss is what you want. You want to keep it really high, like, 
um, you, want the, you want the light to pass through the layers, right? So you want to be glossy so it passes through. Okay, so you can see that I've got a bit of purple there, but it's not super, you know, it's the blue is still under there. I'm gonna get the last dredges of paint off of my palette knives because I'm already out of purple. So now we have like this sort of triangle of purple and I've got a bit left on this brush. So I'll just kind of, you see how fast and I'm loose I'm going? I'm really, right? We really want to bring energy and movement. Okay. For now, we're going to stick there with the purple. Let's give you a better angle. There we go. That's better. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So any questions, put them in the chat box. Then I clean my brushes and I think it's time for the peach. So again, let's think about the color wheel, peach, orange, or blue or opposite. So the peach that I put on here, it's going to pop out. And also purple and blue look, or sorry, orange and purple look great together. So I think it's going to be a really nice color to add here. And I'm feeling like sort of bringing it in here a bit. And this dark purple thing might want to be bigger later. We can always do that later. But I think it's important to go with what you're like intuitively feeling excited about. And I'm excited about this peach. So I'm, I want to go for it. Um, between colors and stuff, clean off your stuff. Clean off your stuff, okay? Just keep it clean and ready to go. Even if you have a bunch of palette knives like me, like let's wipe stuff down that maybe don't have just one color that was your mixing palette knife, just so we're kind of ready. Like the purple's done for now, so I'm just gonna clean this one off, okay? Keeping a really clean working space, and you should, I mean, mine looks pretty messy right now. <laughs> it doesn't mean it has to be like, you know, prim and proper and perfect, right? But like clean tools, right? We need clean tools. All right, let's do this peach. I'm gonna go smaller around. You notice I've done almost the whole painting with these round brushes. I just love them so much. Maybe I'll branch out to a different brush here at some point, not now. Okay, getting into this peach that was neutralized with blue. And I'm feeling like bringing it maybe like around here and letting it wander a little bit, so. Taking drawing lessons, specifically ge um, gesture drawing of figures, so helpful for your art. Gesture drawings, because they're fast. We would do these 30 second drawings of a figure and you really learn how to capture something in a, a really quick amount of time and it carries over to my paintings all the time. I'm gonna let the peach mix with the purple that's there. Yeah, I'm covering up that purple. It's okay, we're gonna bring that purple back in. For now, it's like it's like the thing we're working off of. So we'll go with it. Um, I like looking at the screen because I see it differently in the screen. Um, so you can see that I am bringing a lot of light into this rule of thirds part here. We need a bit more light there too, though, don't we? So let's let's pull some in there. Let's see. Okay. I might just stop with the peach for now. I'm gonna come back to it, but I want to flip the painting. So. Okay, I've got drips, so I'm not going to stay too long because I don't, I don't want the drips to go back. But when I see it this way, we definitely need to kind of get into this space need to figure that out. You know, this is nice because it kind of becomes like a space where the eye can rest. If, we're, if our whole painting is busy, we don't know what to focus on. So we need areas of rest. This is a really nice area of rest for me right now. I'm enjoying that. I think we need to just keep working on this diagonal. Let's bring this out more and then see what's going to happen with this. What? Because this is just sitting there. Okay, so I'm going 
gonna go ahead, I don't have any more of that purple left, so I think I'll quickly show you my palette here. This is what I have left right now is this blue, but it's a little bit much of a jump because I have so much purple in that corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another purple mix. And this time try to get enough paint. Okay, this paint bottle is almost done. And I'll just take some of this blue, once again, harmonious color mix, and let's mix these guys together. And it's dark, so I need to lighten that down. I think I could probably use much of that white that's there. This is a very, these paints are um, heavier body, but also they're a bit older. You know, the paints last a long time if you're using really good quality paint. That, so that medium, I put some in there to just kind of like loosen that up a little bit, and that's a lot better. Okay, we still need to go lighter because if you remember that white I had there, or that purple I had there was quite a bit lighter. So I want to go maybe in between, an in-between value here. I love color mixing. I think color mixing is so relaxing. Like it just, sometimes if I don't feel like painting, I'll just um, be in the studio mixing up colors and put them into little jars. And then I have them for the next time. Okay, so um, there's a bit more red in the purple I have there. So I'm gonna grab some of that red. You know, this is all very subtle, right? But we do want things to blend. Okay, let's just see. And then we're gonna make, let's let's try this. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna glaze out this, this mix here and use this so that I'm still seeing what's under so that it, because then what happens is this color that goes on top, it mixes with what's under. It doesn't physically mix unless it's wet, right? So the under layer should be dry and this goes on top and then we get a, an optical mixture is what it's called, where we perceive it as a different color because that it's layered on another color, right? So, okay, we're going here. And let's go again with this nice big brush and try to tap them a little bit. Unless you want the water to drip. I actually like when the water drips down, but I don't know if I want that right now. So I'm going to keep it nice and dry. Okay. So I'm just kind of, I'm gonna blend a little bit into what I already have here and then pull it over. It's actually already, it's not mixing very much. So it's kind of dry already. <clears throat> okay, I think I want blue up there. I think that's what, I think I just need to do like a lighter blue. So continue with this. And let's, um, if you have your water bottle, I'm just going to do a little water in there just to kind of break through and let it do a fun thing. And then I think I'll do a little bit of rubbing alcohol too. Just so that we get, it lightens up that layer I just put on and lets that under layer show through a bit and doesn't look as quite as heavy. I love using the water and the alcohol. <clears throat> really creates some beautiful effects. Okay, now we're going to get into this light blue up here. So we're always analyzing where we are, right? Especially as we get later in the painting. Later in the painting, it's, it's less loose and fun and free because we have to really think about balance. What are we trying to do when we finish a painting? We want balance. Balance between lights and darks, big and small, con uh, textured and non-textured, um, right? And so right now, there's a lot of like loosey loosey, but not a lot of detail. The detail is starting to come in, right? And like detail needs to come on top of this too, but we'll let that dry before I do that. So yeah, we're trying to strike balance. And I think that we could almost go lighter with this here 
to pop this more and to create more drama. So I think I'll do that. So now I need to make a shade, or not a shade, uh, a, you know, a mix that is lighter. So let's go back down to the palette so you can see what I'm doing here. And I've got this blue already mixed. Let's go ahead and put some of that here. And we'll take this and we'll do the white right in there. Get a clean palette knife first. Okay. <laughs> this paint is old, so we're gonna have to put some of the medium in there to help that spread a little bit more. And then I'm gonna use, I'll use this palette knife. And I want that quite a bit lighter. Getting low on my titanium golden. This is the one I use the most. You can also do, some people do gesso to lighten their colors. It's a really, you know, inexpensive way to lighten your colors. What I don't love about using gesso, it's very matte. Um, but I always varnish my paintings anyway, so it really doesn't matter. I, and I definitely do gesso. I might have to resort to that because um, I really want a white that I can just squeeze out and this one I cannot squeeze out. So, so yeah, don't worry about using, using a bit of gesso if you want to. Let's, let's check this color. So here it is. I think we could even go lighter. Let's, let's push this lighter. Now here's a really good trick for you. If I add white to this, I need to add a ton of white to lighten that because you know, there's a lot of paint there. So I'm going to just put a little bit there and have less painting paint here. And now I'm going to get my gesso so you can see what that looks like. Here's Liquitex. I also have Golden. They're both good. Okay, so now I have two different values here. I want to push this even more. Let's get that even lighter. And my paint's a bit textured because that paint, like I said, is old. <laughs> it has some texture in there, which because I'm a texture lady, I'm cool with that. You might not like that. So you might just need to throw away your paint bottle. Um, if it happens like that. Okay, let's check this color now. Yes. You see, it's popping out. It's lighter than that. Um, it, it doesn't stand out too much from the whole scene, so we're, we're going with this, okay? And I'm going to put a little bit of medium in there, like I've been doing. Actually, quite a bit of medium. Let me show you how much. Because... I want to not make it look like it's just plopped on top. I'm gonna go with even more. Just give it a spritz. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and get that color on there now. I think I'll go with the smaller brush just to a little safer. You know what? Actually, let, let's. I'm gonna use this flat brush. I think I got this from Michaels, maybe. This is not an expensive brush, but I actually like it. Typically, the better the brush, the better everything looks. Let's let's test it out actually and see what we all think. Not a bad brush. This is a bit of a bolder move. I'm throwing a really light color in here. and it's plopped on there. I don't love that it's just kind of feels like it's plopped. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my medium, I'm gonna put that on the palette just by itself. I'm putting, <clears throat> putting my brush into the medium. And I'm gonna spread this out a little bit. I don't like how small this brush is. Um, it's just uh, too small. So, you know, I'd almost rather go with like this brush. So, but I won't, I'm gonna do the round. Back to the round. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to dip it right into the medium so that <clears throat> um, I spread this out a little bit. I could have used more medium in there.
well, that was a happy accident. I just did that and it went into the canvas. I don't know if you can see those drips, but I like that. Again, I'm scrubbing with the side, <clears throat> the side of the brush here. So let's blend on the side. I'm not putting any more paint on my brush, but I'm gonna go between these lines and just spread it out a little bit. Okay. Oh. I will be right back. Oh, okay, it's okay. Um, my alarm just went off in the house, <laughs> but it's okay. My spouse said it. All right. Um, so let's look, let's stop and look. I'm liking this color a lot. I wanna add a bit more, but now I know I need to add more medium, right? So I'm just gonna add a little bit more medium to this one little spot. I'm gonna not worry about this. When we hold a spot too precious and like dance around it, it can limit us. So that's why I'm just kind of going into it. And I'm gonna, we, I'll bring it back out. It's like not a big deal. For now we wanna lay in this, it's like this really nice light background color. Side of the brush, let's blend a little bit, pull it, pull it into these other spots. Just a little bit. I don't, I don't love um, how I'm seeing the brush strokes here, so I'm just gonna use my fingers to rub those out a little bit. Okay. So we're getting close to needing some more details, but I feel like we have enough. Let's just look at the darks and the lights. It's really what we want to see here is do we have enough darks and lights? So we've got the super dark here. Okay, we're just going to break this down. Super dark in this corner. Pretty darn dark up there. Then we get to more of a medium value here, right? These medium dark, there's some medium dark values behind because we started with the dark background. And then we have these lights in this sort of medium to light. So I feel like in terms of darks and lights, it's pretty balanced. You know, maybe right here, we could throw a little bit more in. Let's just throw, kind of bring this drama into this section here. And I also want to cover just a little bit right there. Okay. Okay, this will be our last step is um, what to do with this, this focal point because that's clearly our focal point. I think we need more of this peach in the situation here, okay? So luckily I have some peach left because so I made a nice amount here. I'm gonna spritz my palette again and I'm gonna get my small round brush. Yeah, I think because you know what we're doing here, it, what it's become is it's become an abstract floral. It's one of the things that I gravitate towards is abstract florals, mm -hmm. abstract landscapes. Um, and so I'm feeling like the round brush makes most sense because it's organic, right? Flowers and leaves. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like these hard straight lines. Okay, I'm gonna put, I'm not gonna put too much medium on actually. I don't want medium in this because I want this to stand out. So now we want to bring, like I feel like we want like this to expand out a little bit and be a little bit more dramatic. So we want to like, we have a line that way. So let's bring a line this way, right? I'm going to keep the paint with my palette knife on it right next to me. Thank you. 
just trying to bring some marks sort of off the page. Um, that's a broken line. I'm doing it lightly so that it like, um, so that we have like a sense of movement and gesture. Maybe let's just do this a little bit. Just bring like the look of like petals or something. Very lightly, barely even touching here. Okay, so that one stands out too much to me. So I'll just get my wet paper towel and rub that out a little bit. There we go, that's better. <clears throat> okay, so we need a bit more down here, just a little bit. Trying to vary my mark so I'm not doing all these like squiggly things. So like kind of doing this little, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Cotton or something, I don't know like what shape that is. Okay, that's gonna be probably too, yeah, that's a little too much for me. So just blend it out a little bit. There we go. Okay. So it feels pretty balanced right now. Um, I think I'm gonna stick with that for now. And then let's, cause I'm looking at, all right, we have 20 minutes left, so we're doing pretty well. Let's work on getting this pulled out a bit, okay? So usually what I do with the focal point, especially like one like that, is I'll add medium into the paint to create my focal point. And so right now, um, to show what I'm doing here on my palette, just gonna clean up a little bit and, um, get some paints pulled to the side and saved. So, cause I don't think I'm gonna use this blue for right now. So I'm just gonna kind of bring it over here and get another palette knife. I don't have too many left here. So I'll just use this putty scraper to get all the paint off and put this on top. So put that on top. That'll keep that wet for quite a bit, actually. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just give a little, you know, spritz in there, create a little humidity. So, because is my palette's a bit of a mess here, and now I need a nice big gloppy mix of that. And so um, this lighter color, I want to keep that separate from that because I might, I might, you know, I might go look at this in the end and say, oh, I need to add a bit more of X, Y, and Z like more of that light color. So let's not lose it. I'll just use my finger here. And I'll just say, I usually use gloves. I recommend wearing gloves. I don't do them for these classes. I will start wearing them as I paint more online here because I do intend to um, teach online more in the next coming year. I'm gonna be starting a membership, launching an online course. So this will keep happening if you're enjoying these. Okay, and then this color, I'll just park right there. Not a lot left, but you never know when you might just need a bit of that color. So let's just, because everything else I'm gonna clean up here. Okay, so now we'll just do a quick clean. And I, I do think these little things are important to learn. Important to keep your area relatively decent <laughs> while you're working. It feels less overwhelming. It's it's worth the time to just do that. And you can see I just, the water helps to keep that. There we go, whoops. Okay. There we go, that feels a bit better. Also, it's just easier um, to clean your palette at the end. Okay, we're gonna focus on, let's get these guys. We don't really need those right now. We're focusing on this color here. Okay, this purple. And I'm going to add black to it because that's originally how it was. It was purple and black. This is to make my focal point. And ooh, that was a lot of black. Ooh, look how that changed that. 
Well, good thing we have some light colors nearby. Oops. I'm gonna use this pout knife. I like this one a lot better. Okay, to lighten that a bit, I'm actually I'm gonna use this color, some of that purple. Then we'll get the harmonious thing going. Okay, so this became a bit more gray than I like, but let me just see what it looks like because maybe it'll it'll look good. Let's check it out. Too, too, a little too um, unsaturated for me. So I might need to do another mix over here with this purple <clears throat> and then add that to the purple because that's really intense. So let me get a good palette knife to get into this purple, which is almost done. Okay. See, purple is a very dark color. So I probably need to, so I'm gonna just add a little bit of this, but I think I need to add more of this blue in there. So let's do that. Okay, so let's, I, I like that color. Let's see if we wanna put that on. You know what I wanna do? I wanna add more red because there's so much cool in here that I think we need a bit of warm to pop it. So um, I do have a bit of red on here. Let's just add a little bit of red in and I will do the pyrrole red light. So it's, it's a really kind of cool, almost orange red. So I want it to be bright. And I'm going to use all of that. And then I think I need more white. I love purple red. It's one of my favorite, whoops, one of my favorite colors. And with, with the, um, I find with purples, you really do need to add white to see them because it's such a dark color. Let's just get all this in. Okay. Let's check. That's a pretty nice color. Let's check that now. Pretty good, not quite what I want. <laughs> so I'm gonna add, I'm gonna try quinacridone crimson now. So, you know, it's really a process of like trying to figure out what's gonna work and you have to really see it on your piece before you know. And so it's really good to, um, to really get the mix right. And yes, you could just go buy the color you want for sure. But this teaches you about color more. So we're gonna start with the red. Okay, that's a bit more, I think, what I wanted. So let's check that now. This is a pretty important part. So that's why I want to get it right. Okay, so now I'm going to go in between the two. I'm going to just add some of this to this, and we're going to go with that color. And I'm going to add just a little bit of white, actually. Oh, that was not a little bit, but oh, yeah, there we go. That's kind of what I'm more looking for. Okay. Good, that's the color I want. So, in this mix, I'm going to add some glass beads to make it um, look really cool. <laughs> um, I love the Liquitex glass beads. I know this was not in your list either. Um, as I move into, if you end up all, you know, continuing to work with me. Um, you know, I'll, I'll do periodic free ones too. But, um, you know, when we do the membership and the online classes, I will definitely be having a much longer sort of supply list than what I have for these. Okay, so you want to make sure you put a clean palette knife in here. And I usually do about 25 to 50% medium to um, paint. There's a bit, quite a bit of paint on here. So that's why I'm adding it, and this is also a thickener. <clears throat> what I would typically do for this area too is add a little bit of either the golden high gel, the high solid gel, or the Nova Color, um, like thickening medium. And um, but I'm not going to do that because I do not have them with me in the studio. So I'm working out of two studios right now. This is my home studio, and then I have um, my downtown studio where I teach the art classes and stuff and 
downtown Santa Fe. Okay, so I'm a little worried about doing this because I feel like it's going to take away some of our, our contrast, but I'm just going to do it. So um, let's let's do it. Yep. So you see how that took away some of the contrast. I do not like that. So I'm scraping that away. <laughs> and this is a good lesson to learn that you have to just do the thing sometimes. But I'm putting purple on top of this. I don't, I don't like that. I'm just going back to the pure purple. It's pretty forgiving if you white, if you get, if you hit this quickly, you know, to remove. I'll probably get some of this color in the rest of the piece, but that's okay. I don't really mind too much. So let's get this down. Water bottle. I don't mind that it's making this peachy situation kind of pink. I think that's kind of fun. And just you keep using a clean paper towel to pull it out. Okay, do you see how that's so much better? It really is so much better. Let's just go with the purple. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this purple. I'm gonna, because I have so little purple left, I'm just gonna add the beads right into my container here. So, because I have, I don't have enough to sort of worry about. So I'm adding the beads into my purple color over here, right in my container. And I think it's gonna look a lot better. <clears throat> you have to take a risk to know if it's going to look good or not, or to, to kind of break through barriers. If you just play it safe, you know, you're not going to do super exciting things and you're not going to discover new pathways of working. And that's why I, I force myself sometimes to do the thing that feels a bit scary. Um, and I'm glad I tried that, but I'm glad I'm, we're we took it away and we're going back. So now I'm just going to use my palette knife to apply the purple and I'll come I'll come closer in a bit so you can see what the texture looks like and I don't really love this palette knife for applying this part it's too small so let's go to a bigger one I tend to love this shape I would get this shape in all the sizes you know really big medium small I just this one just seems to work the best in my opinion Now it's just getting the shape right and not, we don't want it to be too big either or too, um, mm. <laughs> we're going to scrape the sides a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to add some of the peach around it. It's getting a bit big, I'd say. So it's kind of like not a great shape. I'll just scrape it a little bit here. And I'm going to pull some of these colors. I'm so glad we got these colors. It, it, it's just plopped on there. And I can see it through the screen too. It's just like, whoo, that is just plopped on there. So we want to pull it out. And um, this is the drawback of, of painting live in front of an audience, right? Like. I don't know if I'm going to nail this thing or not. Right. So like, you know, now I have to sort of figure out how to fix this thing. And so the way to fix it is to bring some of this, you know, other color back in, perhaps I'm going to get rid of the peach a bit and, you know, let's kind of work back in and lighten this up a little bit. It's a little crazy. And we might just have to flow with whatever's going to happen right now. I might just change quite drastically. Um, I think I could scrape a little bit more off here. Let's do that. And let's, it's going to shift quite a bit now. Okay. So now we're needing, I think, to um, bring that peach back color back in. So I'm going to quickly make this peach color. 
white, red, and yellow, mostly white. I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I could have just left it where it was, right? But that purple seemed like it needed something else. So it was a bit of a risk to go in there and do this. But ultimately, I think that we're going to, you know, I'm going to come up with a better painting because it is going to <clears throat> feel, well, first of all, like I've worked really hard to make it, bring it to where it is, right? But second of all, it, it wasn't quite working where it was, even though it looked good. And so I had to take that risk. So you can see this peach is a little bright. I need to add a bit of blue to bring that down. And actually, I know that this peach will mix with the purple that's already there, so I can probably keep it pretty bright. Now it's like a gray peach. So let's let's see how that works on here, on our very different painting now. <laughs> First, I'm gonna try to remove some of this or blend it a little bit more. Using a wet paper towel to kind of just remove some of that. getting better. I'll, I'll let that stay kind of thick there. Okay, so now let's get into that peach. We'll bring some of the peach in. And again, it's going to mix in with what's already there, but that's okay. Okay. And also, by the way, because this is now two and a half hours, I've been working on this painting. It's rare for me to finish a painting in two and a half hours. I, I wish I could finish painting in two and a half hours. There are times when it happens, not often. All right. better. It's getting better. It was scary for a little bit there. And I'm going to add some of that blue back in around the flower with a bit of white ready to go. Isn't it funny how, how painting can be scary? <laughs> but it is, right? <clears throat> we feel like we're vulnerable, we're exposing ourselves, right? Um, we don't wanna mess up, we don't wanna look like we're bad at something. It's a very, um, vulnerable place to be in, to be making art. I commend you for making art for that reason. Having taught for 18 years, middle school and high school, and, and then the past 10 years adults as well, um, it's, it's a hard thing. A lot of people just won't even do it. So I commend you for just doing it. I'm just trying to get rid of some of that purple that's there and just bring this part down a wee bit. See, I'm trying to not go into the purple there or else it'll mix in. I'm gonna blend it around so it's not just locked in there. It's gonna take a bit of work for me to really get this part to work. I'm gonna have to <clears throat> work it a bit more, two minutes till 10. I'm gonna try to make it happen. <laughs> hmm. I'm getting into what would happen if mode, um, which is like, what would happen if I put peach up there? I think it would be, uh, I'm not gonna go there right, right now, not with two minutes left. <clears throat> and it's possible that this will have to 
be finished another time. Or I'll keep painting, and if you have time to keep watching, then you can do that. It seems like such a simple little thing to do to finish this spot, but because it's the focal point, it is pretty important. <laughs> we have to, we really, this is where the eye is gonna go first. We want to like really make, help people go there and make it interesting. Um, I'm thinking like more lightness right above it would help. Kind of like that idea. I'm gonna try a flat brush. Let's just go with this thing that's happening. I'm gonna get a big wet brush and just blend a little bit, see if this can't come together. Just blending out this purple. It almost wants things coming out of it, you know, like maybe this kind of brush, like a liner brush and lightness coming out. Maybe the peach is kind of shooting out of this form. Let's do it. <laughs> well, that's a, you know, <laughs> that brings a little bit more interest to the spot. So it's like, Okay, got this idea, not quite working yet, but like I'm gonna keep playing with this and seeing what I can do. triangular for me so let's widen it a little bit here like that part is maybe it's some peach wants to go in there I'm gonna keep working it is 10 o'clock um, but I'm gonna keep going if you'd like to see where this ends up like how it's mixing with that purple. I think that's really cool. Now I'm getting a little bolder because I kind of feel like I don't have much to lose. So it's kind of nice when you're in that space of like loosening up, like, well, you know, it already changed so much. This is a different painting. I can be, I can go back to being a bit looser. <clears throat> I think for now, however, this is not too bad of a spot to stop. And so I'm just gonna sort of dial in a few spots, just get my paper towel and sort of kind of bring a little bit of blue in there. I don't love that mark. That's better. And let's bring a little bit of that peach out a bit more on this side. Just a little bit. That's kind of fun to do that. <laughs> Now I'm really going for it. Now I'm like loosening up. Because I know I can pull this back out again with the colors I had, but it needs to sort of, ex this thing needs to explode a little bit, don't you think? 
And then we pull some of it out. We go crazy, like I just did. And then it's like, okay, what do we pull out now? I'll just get one of these rags that has just purple on it and just sort of pull some of that out. Like blend it out a little bit, but let it be there still. You know, like just a little suggestion of some craziness that's going, but not uber crazy. Okay, I have to take some distance from it. Um, and, you know, I'll do that. But, you know, actually, I think that we're at a really good stopping point. This is almost done, if not done. Um, I think I would do a few minor things, maybe adding some highlights here. But now what we have is, I think, a much more interesting painting that um, has a lot of movement and has a lot of value changes. And I want to just blend this in a little bit more over here. But I think we're we're at a really good stopping point here. And I might add some more lightness here or something like that, but it really is close to being done. So um, if you have any questions, put them in the chat box. If you want to email me your image and get feedback on it, I'd be happy to give you uh, feedback on your painting. And I'll be doing another free class uh, some point in early December before the holidays. So um, if you don't have any questions, I'm going to go ahead and end this off here. And I'll just do finish off with a close-up of the texture with the um, beads. So that is what you get with the glass beads. So thank you so much for being here and painting with me, and I hope you have a great weekend. And feel free to email me your image to get feedback. Please like this post and subscribe to my channel because my channel is growing. All right, take care. Have a good day. Bye.